Hey, everybody, it's the coach. This is Madden Football on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got what should be an interesting matchup between the Los Angeles Rams and the Tennessee Titans. I'll be back with you again with scores around the league at halftime. But kickoff right around the corner. And standing by to call the action, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All in all, we have a pretty pleasant December day in the Volunteer State. The chilly rain from last night has moved on. The temps have bumped up a bit here at Nissan Stadium in Nashville. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it. This crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Los Angeles Rams and the Tennessee Titans. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, we take a look at this Titan ball club entering play. The losers their last time out, so they'll look to make amends here. And one of the best ways you can do that is to be at home, and they are. They're going to try and ride that home crowd and that wave of emotion to a victory in this one. Meanwhile, for the visiting Rams, they've come in on a nice run of recent form. Four wins out of five. It's the final three weeks of the season. Still plenty to play for here as we're underway in week 15. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. So the Titans set to go to work for the first time. They'll have a former Heisman Trophy winner calling the shots, hailing from the island of Oahu in Hawaii, Marcus Mariota coming off of a loss their last time out I think he's just seeking to make a bigger impact on the game he threw a touchdown pass didn't throw an interception I think he just wants to jump those numbers up in terms of flinging it around and letting his receivers get into the end zone here's the first carry for Ezekiel Elliott and an early how do you do right there as they're going to bury him in the backfield it'll go as a loss of a yard on the game's first play second down Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game, so what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, there's nothing but room to run. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. Working out of the gun, Mariota. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's going to be brought down short of the first at about the 31-yard line. They'll get 11, but still a little short. Fourth down. They've got good playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. I don't know what happened last week to, to really hurt their performance and, and hold down their production, but I would dare say that this week in practice, there's a lot of talk about how they're going to increase their proficiency. And that was a good start getting the playmakers involved. You mentioned that to me pregame. That's what they did there. Yeah, I think a lot of people think the coaching staff really gets on them, and that's how they motivate them. Most of these guys are self-motivated. They have a lot of pride in their performance. Golf will lead the Rams up here, first and 10 at their own 22. Now the first carry here for Todd Gurley. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. The headshots here are the offensive unit. And what about Brandon Cooks? If he's not a 1,000-yard receiver every year he's healthy in the league, I'll be surprised. Came out of college wanting to be a pro, studied all the best receivers in the NFL before he even got to the league. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It's a gain of 15, and the Rams have a first down. 
With that run, double check my math, yes, he, he has hit 8,000 career rushing yards. And that's fantastic. That means he's now approaching the top 50 all-time rushers in NFL history. That means he just sped past Terrell Davis, who's in the Hall of Fame. And now he's just got to go ahead and be strong and run hard because he's chasing down Larry Zonka. On second and 12, Goff. And the open receiver, it's Robert Woods. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That's a gain of 13 first down Rams. They go play action here on first down. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Going up top for Cup. This is caught inside the 15. Let's go, boy. Let's go. You think back to the Super Bowl against New England, the Rams never even got into the red zone in that game, and now here they are in the red zone on their opening drive with a first down. So now following the big play, they've got a first and goal all the way down at the 10. Throwing again is gone. He's going to dump it off to Gurley. He'll get only two there, and it's second and goal. Time for a look at our starters here on defense. Into this game, they're ranked number 22 in the NFL against the pass, Charles. And I think you're going to see some changes in the offseason, whether it's through the draft, free agency, maybe even both. They definitely need some help in the secondary. Here's second and goal, operating from the eight-yard line. Now Goff will hand this one to Gurley. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. A nice run there as he picks up six. It's going to be third and goal now. Now Goff on third and goal. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. So they opted to pass for it on third and goal. Let's see what they do on fourth and goal. Well, I think they threw it with the idea that if they didn't get it, they would go for it on fourth and goal. So they've got another play in their pocket. They're going to have to call it right now. No field goal here. Well, after marching down the field, only getting three there, it kind of feels like a win for the defense. And it does. They'll go to the sideline feeling a lot better that they didn't give up a touchdown after the march against them. But if I were the offense, I wouldn't hang my head over that one. That's a good drive, and three points were put on the board. Tennessee offense about set and ready to go. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. Second and six, just inside the 30. Now a carry for the shifty Deion Lewis. Now a timeout being called as there's an injured Titan down on the field. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. From the gun, Mariota. And he will find his man on the outside. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. First time these two have hooked up this afternoon, and it's a first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Mariota. And that'll be incomplete. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. And to give this time to the tailback. And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. It's caught by Davis. 
And he gets this only to the 41, not near enough for the first. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. Well, the good thing about covering any game I do with you is I know that there's no problem with rhythm. Now, what we're watching offensively, a little bit of a problem there. Yeah, punt on the first drive, looking at another one here. Just a little slow. It, you know, they, they were talking about a fast start, but that hasn't been the case. Yeah, and let's face it. Any team we cover always talks about a That's fast true. start. That's true. But it's not necessarily going to happen just because they say so. And whether it's the script, whether it's, you know, just what they're going through, whether they're seeing different defenses, they're going to have to figure it out as this game moves on. They'll start out on the ground with Gurley. He'll get about three as he's taken down at the 23. Let's go, let's go. The last run That's got three. Do, now here's second and seven. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. And not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. A one-yard gain there following the three-yard pickup on first down. Throwing on third. Goff. It's hauled in by Brandon Cooks. And they will stop him short. They get him to the ground at the 27. No first down. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down. They gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. A big boot that time, 57 yards, the official distance. And it'll be Titan football. Mariota and the Titans break the huddle first and 10 at their own 16. They'll start things on first down with Deion Lewis. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. A second down run with Lewis. Oh, and now some space to operate. 34 yards there and a first down. I know that play went to the left side, and that's what it was designed to do, an outside handoff there. But how about the whole offensive line being involved? Seal the left side where the play was going, what they call play side. But how about on the back side? Just taking care of business to make sure no one can get there and disrupt it. Is the biggest key the left tackle? Without a doubt. Control that edge. Get out there. You want that left tackle, or if you bring your tight end over there, either way, control the edge of the line of scrimmage. You've got a chance to rumble. Call that a loss of five yards on the play. Check, 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 check. From the shotgun, it's Mariota. Completes it to Davis. And this will be good for a pickup of nine to the 46. The numbers for Davis last week, seven catches, 80 yards, and a touchdown. And they think they have a matchup advantage in this one. They're going to try and find some space for him to work and make sure he touches the football. To throw again on second down. Mariota, this one caught by Davis. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Rams' 32-yard line. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Mariota to Lewis on the draw. And if there was a lane there, it closed up quickly as he stopped for no gain. Second down. Looking to throw on second down. Mariota, it's caught. Humphreys. The Rams go nickel here defensively on third. Now we've got movement up front. I think this is going to be on the Titans. Yeah, maybe they were coming with a blitz that time, and it caused a jump. I think if we saw it, you know that they saw it. Might have been a little discussion down there. Bad guys coming. Pick them up. Pick them up. And someone jumped. Now Lewis. And they will rally and stop him short of the first down. They get him to the ground at the 26. It's a gain of five, but it'll lead to a fourth down. Getting the sense, Charles, are going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far is working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. So three drives now for this offense, and that field goal gives them their first three points. So if you're an offensive coordinator and you're averaging a point a drive, 
you're in the wrong lot of work, aren't you? <laughs> you got to find a way to yeah. unlock the key to these defenses and put some big points on the board. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. These two teams all tied after one. Mike's 54. And let's pin the mirrors back and go full strength. Goff going to hand it to Gurley. And shutting him off. Now open field. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. And he will finally be taken down at the Titans 34. And a nice little broken tackle run there by Todd Gurley, the 10th pick in the 2015 draft. And that's what you get with him. That full package of speed, power, able to catch the ball in the backfield. Many people doubted him coming out because of the knee injury in college. <laughs> They're seeing the full Todd Gurley now, and it hurts. This pass from Goff to Everett, the tight end. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. No, for some reason, it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you <laughs> move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized, executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. That's a gain of 13 first down Rams. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. From the red zone now, Goff. This is caught. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Brandon Cooks, his 11th touchdown of the year. And the Rams have taken the lead. Those are the touchdowns that aren't just scored on Sundays or on Monday night. Those are the ones that are scored during the week because they had that preparation in a great route run. Oh, I love that observation because you don't just roll out on game day and say, okay, go run this route and let's get it done. That means exactly what you said. The practice had to occur beforehand, which led to the timing, which led to the touchdown. McManus's point after is good, and the lead is now 10-3. to That time, a six-play drive, and the result for the Rams, a touchdown. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. It's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. Now they'll run with Lewis. Call it about a gain of three, and they'll be looking at a third and seven coming up. The Titans on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and seven. Throwing. Mariota looks to throw. Fires right side. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. Not much going on this drive. Looks like they're going to have to punt it away, CD. And right now, I know a lot of their fans are screaming for the OC to change things up, get away from what he's been calling. Sometimes you just need better execution of the plays that have been called. So out of bounds on the punt, and the spot will be, the side judge says, right at, yeah, right at the 35-yard line here. And our attention shifts to Todd Gurley. We're in the second quarter. They've got the lead. The lead, though, not so much because of the ground game, 
because of their air attack, Charles. So what they're seeing so far is the possibility of things loosening up later in the ground game. Through the air first, maybe they have to start respecting that even more as the game goes on, and then there will be running lanes to find later. Yeah, try to get him more involved here on this drive, maybe. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Robert Woods, former USC man, the intended target, and it's second down. Now Gurley. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. Goff now looks to throw. And that one's complete to Gurley. And he can only manage to take the football to the 40, and that is well shy of the first down marker. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. On is the punter, Hecker, as he gets this one away. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. Tennessee offense about set and ready to go and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. Throwing on second down. Mariota, it comes, and he lost the football. Mariota had it jarred loose. On plays like this when the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is a quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. After the sack, they'll come up now third and long. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see them run the ball here just to try and get some space. To throw is Mariota. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense. Ouch, you thought you had the defensive stand. Roughing the passer wipes it out. What does every defense talk about? Three and out, right? Thought they were able to get off the field. Not so. And a penalty flagged down as he gets only about a yard. And let's listen in on the call. They go play action. Mariota. Quick hitter here, it's complete. Give him seven on the play, and that'll bring up a second and 11. Throwing again on second down. Mariota, he gets it to Humphreys. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That one good for a pickup of 15 for Tennessee. The goal for any offense versus his own defense Find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. They run. This is Lewis. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. On second down. It's Lewis. Sometimes your philosophies get challenged at times you don't want them to. They did try to stick to the running game on the first two plays. Didn't amount to much. And now facing a third and long at the outset of this drive. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up four. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up, keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's go. into the go. end zone for a touchback. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. 
You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. On first down, it's gone. That's taken in by Henderson. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. That's what I'm talking about. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. They run out of the shotgun with Gurley. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. So on the heels of the run by Todd Gurley, another first and ten. A shotgun snap for Goff. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Now Goff. And they'll set up the screen to Gurley. Give him six on the screen, but now it's third down. Your trip is here, baby. Your trip is here. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. Here's Goff. And he's going to be taken down. Goff is sacked. Jarrell Casey make that now eight sacks for him on the season. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it, but it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. On first and ten, here's Mariota. Going to throw right side here, complete. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. That one good for a pickup of 15 for Tennessee. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Play action now, Mariota. He's got his man on the crossing round. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it indeed. Here come the flags. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they'll march up another 15 against your squad. Now here's a throw right side taken in by his tight end. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Looking to throw again on second down. Mariota. And this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball, and now they face a third down. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Complete. This is Lewis. And he's going to come up a few yards short of the first. They get him to the ground at the 37. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And this score will stay right where it is. Set to begin their next drive. The Rams offense at the line. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves them with a very manageable second and one. Back to throw. Golf. They'll find Everett there. Complete. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout their second as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. Goff now 13 of 16 throwing the football. It's first and 10. 
And that's complete to Cooks. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. An excellent pickup of 34 yards. The Rams going to be forced to use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. Here's Goff to the end zone, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Cooper Cup there, but it'll be second and goal. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight yard line, second and goal. Offense. Not easy being a rookie left tackle in this league, and there they got him for the penalty. Not easy at all. Think about what you're dealing with every game you play, ostensibly. And this is caught for a touchdown. Now hold everything here, flag in the backfield. This one might be coming back. So erase the red zone score. They'll have to dial that one up again. And you know how difficult it is to strike in the red zone because things are a little bit more condensed. You gotta go back to their play chart and see if they can dial up another one. So a capper there to a pretty good first half. And I love the way that they put a chokehold on the clock and pretty much drained everything before they put the field goal on the board as they headed into the half. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee and that should do it for half number one. So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, time for a sprint to the finish as it's time to get you caught up with what's happening around the NFL here in a pivotal Week 15. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. In the game you're watching, it was Jared Goff with a strong first half. His guys lead it by 10 as we send it back out to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Gentlemen. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. This is taken at his four. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. You ready? You ready? You ready? Set to begin their next drive, the Rams' offense at the line. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjust. And the Titan defense steps up here, and down he goes. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. This is caught. It's Cooks. Pushing a foul. Oh, they stopped them shy of the marker, thought they were bringing up fourth down, and then that penalty. Let's face it, they thought they had bent but could absorb that, right? Instead, they broke as a result of their own penalty. Meanwhile, Goff to Gurley as he drops it off for his running back. And down to the 20, he'll go before heading out of bounds. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down L.A. Goff on first down. That's complete to the tight end, Everett. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. A gain of six there on first. 
Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Here's Gurley. And he's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. Todd Gurley with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Rams tack on to their advantage. Always important to get the first score of the second half. Now you start to pull away a little bit and get some breathing room going. And now we find out about the fortitude of the group that's behind because they were kept. And now it's blocked. And the Titans pick it up. It's a foot race. He's at the 50, 30, past the 20. And he takes it the distance across the goal line for two points. That's up. That's up. Following the botch PAT, they're set to kick this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Let's go. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. They trail offense first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. And an alley to run. Now he's gonna get this all the way down inside the 35. That good for 22 and a first down. Boy, the offensive line there, that was a thing of beauty to watch them block. I love how you give a little appreciation for those big guys up front and well-deserved. But how about the execution behind them? You can see the hours of practice that have gone into it. Great pocket by the running back. Quarterback puts it right in the perfect spot. Great mesh point by them. The timing on point, the run even better. And partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. And now look at this. Big game, but a fumble. And now the Rams have got it going the other way. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, he did what he's known for. He made the catch, then he turned into a runner, took the contact, and coughed it up. And all I remember as a player... When they catch the ball, when those acrobatic guys catch it, you have to make them pay sometimes. You have to put it on them, big tackle, knock the ball free, anything you can do to slow them down. Todd Gurley and the offense, they get set and trot back out there now. And he's sure looking like a lock for a thousand yard season. Don't know if he's gonna get it in this game, but he'd probably like to just to get past that point. Yeah, and if he doesn't, as you noted, there's still time, still opportunity. There's still more games to be played. So, yeah, it's not a lock, but barring injury, it certainly looks like he's going to get there. And what an accomplishment that is. Anytime you get over 1,000 yards, you're celebrated in the NFL. It's been quite a season. Still a couple chapters left in that book, though. Took till the second half, but finally a red zone opportunity here. They've got a first and 10 from the 10. Mariota now. Completes it to Davis. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. This is Lewis. Able to get a couple here, but won't get across the plane as they stop him right around the one. They'll try to run for it. Lewis. Oh, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape. And that is not going to get it done. That'll wind up going for a loss of four. And it'll be fourth down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. And the 13-year man puts it through. And that will get the disadvantage now back down to 11. So they recovered the fumble, but ultimately could not take advantage of the short field. Definitely a lost opportunity right there. I mean, they were in prime position to put six on the board. Ended up settling for three. 
Todd Gurley in the Rams offense set to take over. He is knocking on the door for 100 yards in this ball game. And it's so important. It doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal. Just short of it, a little bit over. A little bit over feels better to everyone. Offensive line, running back, team totals, just something magical about breaking that barrier. And he's right there on the doorstep now. Bringing him down defensively, Jayon Brown. Delayed give, Goff to Gurley. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Holding offense. So some holding over on the left side of that O-line. And I know for the guys trying to move those big defensive people, they'd love for them to stay in one spot. But they move around so quick and so fast that sometimes you just have to grab them. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. He was going right back to Cooper Cup, and it's third down. Now gone. For plain and simple, that's the second. In trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. Jayon Brown. Coming in to drop it for a loss of eight, and it also brings up fourth. Third and long defense with no fear, they brought the pressure. Zero fear at all. That means they feel really good about the guys we're going to cover, but the biggest one is they think their pressure will get there before he has a chance to find an open receiver. The punt team on now is from their end zone. They get it away. Fielded at the 33. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. Nearly a huge return, as it is still a very good one. 24 yards. And the Titans are going to start this drive in great field position as they take over first and 10. They'll run on first down. T. And he'll do a nice job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Those are the plays this defense needs with the deficit they're facing. It certainly is, and they've got to continue to swarm the football and hope that someone, while they're holding up the ball carrier, can get in there and rake it and lock it free. They need to get some takeaways as well. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now Mariota. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he'll be brought down with the first down and a late flag here, too. And he may get a few more tacked on for good measure. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. The penalty moves him into the red zone here on first and 10 to throw Mariota. This will be caught at about the six. That's another gain of 15 on back-to-back -back plays. Partners, a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. And just a short gain that time as they're able to get him down. Only a yard on the pickup there. Second and goal. Come on, QB, come on. They'll run for it with Deion Lewis. And he gets in. Touchdown, Tennessee. Deion Lewis, his fourth touchdown on the year as his guys are back within a single score. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet or they just executed better. Because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals before this one, they finally were able to put into the end zone. Well, whatever he did, speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked there. Yeah, it worked very well. He and his field general in pretty good sync right now. They're starting to move the ball well. The decision is to decline it and not give him the down back. They might as well have sent a skywriter above the stadium saying, we don't think you can get the first down against our defense by that decision. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at their own 22. A play fake to Gurley. Now Golf. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. Brandon Cooks, the receiver he was going after. And that'll bring up second down. Gurley. 
And he'll get this up over the 25 to the 26. Call it a gain of four, and it'll leave him with a third down and six to go. Throwing on third, Goff. That's going to be complete to his tight end, Everett. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down L.A. Goff now six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. Goff now to throw. He'll get this one to Cup complete. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what'll be a third and four. Goff. Man open, it's Cup. He's got it. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A big gain of 28 as the drive continues. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 as they've got it to the 28-yard line. Here's Goff. And Martin's got it complete. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Back to the ground game here, Gurley. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. You know, it's become cliche, but we have seen it and observed it. When runners have days like what we're seeing right now, they often take their offensive linemen out for stakes afterwards, don't they? They all go buy them dinner. But after a play like that, he might reduce and might go to the corner and just grab a hot dog or two, huh? Hey, I mean, they've still been blocking for him well in this game. They don't get one mulligan up front. Okay, so what we're saying then is we're going petite filet <laughs> instead of porterhouse. Eight How's ounce. that? Eight ounce is good. All right, just check it. Now it's gone. Oh, no, he lost the football. They'll try again on second and goal after going backwards to the 12. Now a draw as Goff gives to Gurley. And a pickup of about four down inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. This has been a long drive. you got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Out of the gun. Goff. And it's complete. He's got it in the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Gerald Everett, his second touchdown on the season. And the Rams tack on to their advantage. No surprise there. Third and goal down here. That's where they're going to look for their tight end. Yeah, you want that big guy running his routes because it doesn't matter who they cover him with. If it's another big guy, he might use his bulk against him. If it's a shorter defender, might go over the top. Either way, you tend to find a little bit of a mismatch in that area. Extra point from McManus is good. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Tennessee offense about set and ready to go. Mariota on first down. Sets up the screen to Lewis. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. An ideal beginning of the drive there is they'll get 20 and a first down. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Let's go, D, tighten up. Mariota. Now they go screen, it's complete. Nothing on the screen that time, now it's third down. 
The Titans on third down. They're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. This is third and eight. On the draw, this is Lewis. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Well, that's pretty symptomatic about how things have gone here. That play was just shut down right from the start. And not going to give them a lot of confidence to help turn things around. He gets this away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. That one sails out of bounds. A side judge will walk it off. And he says it went out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Nice punt. The field position game, such an overlooked facet, Charles, of an NFL game, but this offense, they're going to be pinned back. What an ideal punt. An ideal punt, and it leads to that term complimentary football because them doing that puts their defense in a great spot, doesn't it? Gives them a chance. If they want to be aggressive, try and maybe get a safety out of this whole thing, it puts them in that position. Back to the workhorse today. It's Gurley. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop, but that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. Five yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a third down. Following the penalty, it's Gurley. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. Here we go. Mike, 20. Check, 55, Mike. Rip left, rip left. Now it's Goff off the bootleg. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. On the draw, Goff gives to Gurley. And nowhere for him to go again. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Back to back stops, make it third and 10. To throw is Goff. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. And they work this we well we upfield across the 45. Go. And they convert on third with a gain of 22. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. This pass from Goff to Everett, the tight end. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. First down Los Angeles there with a pickup of 14 yards. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 right at the 40. Now whistles and a flag down. I think one of the Rams linemen might have moved. So a loss of five and it'll be second down. A full start backs him up five. First and 15. Here comes a 20th carry for Gurley. A good comeback there after the penalty. Nine yards, and it's second and six. From the 36, Goff over the middle, and it's incomplete. That time trying to find Gerald Everett, and it's third down. So they need six yards here on third down. They're two for two on third down tries so far on this drive. Now it's Gurley. And he's not going to get the first down. He had to get to the 30, but he's a yard or two short. It's a gain of five. And now the question, will the offense stay out there on fourth and one? This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I, I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. So they settle for just the three, but clearly right now anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt. Obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off, but it's still eight up time. Got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. 
These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. No, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Now a quick throw as that's complete on the hitch route. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. The Titans on third down. They've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. Here it's third and three, and he's got a man, Corey Davis. He's up to 87 yards receiving now, and it's a first down. A draw play here, Lewis. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. That sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. On second and 12, Mariota. And he whips that one incomplete there. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. To throw is Mariota. He'll get this one into the hands of Lewis. And he'll only get this to the 47. He needed a few more yards to pick up the first. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. Mariota now from the 50. It's caught by Davis. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A good pick up there, a 22. Mariota going to bring him up first and 10. And he's 5 for 6 now, throwing the ball on this drive. Now Lewis here on first down. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Personal foul, face mask, defense. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the Let's penalty go, you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. Mariota firing quickly here, and that's complete. And this play doesn't go anywhere. Backwards, losing yardage to the 11. So the Titans in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They've got it second and goal as they look for a late touchdown. To throw again on second down, Mariota. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Roughing the passer, defense. Maybe a frustration penalty there because he's picked them apart. They've tried their best to get to him and haven't done it successfully. A penalty as a result of that hit there. And this is caught now for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. Okay, so they got the score. Do you go for one here and save the possible two-point conversion for later? I think you do because if you go for two here and you don't get it, that's deflation. Yeah. Now you wonder why you're even going for it. Take the easy one now and come back and try and get it later. Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. As this gets them back within a touchdown and a two-point conversion. A 10-play drive that time. And the result in the end, a Titans touchdown. This one taken from the seven. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And this game not quite over yet. And we'll likely see them take all three timeouts defensively, so they can't just kneel this one out. They're going to have to try to run a few plays. You're exactly right. They've got to get a first down. And he can't.
Get a throw away. He's taken down. The Titans going to use the first of their timeouts as he'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Now on second down, this is Gurley. Yeah, nothing doing here as this time the run maybe gets him back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. Got an extra defensive back out there for the Titans now here for third down. They're going to try the jet sweep on third and long. Now the Titans will use their third and final timeout as they'll get it with just over 90 seconds to go in the ball game. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Fielded just inside the 20. And when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. They're down here in a one-score game. But the time, it's a factor, but it's not a huge factor right now, is it? It's really not because this amount of time gives them a chance to run their offense, to go through play sequences. And this is what they work on every week in practice, usually on a Friday. They go and he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Back to throw. Okay, you know my bias is about to come out here. A lot of people would think that the offense is just moving in the wrong direction. I'd say they're moving in the right direction because the defense is pushing them back. Former defensive guy. Now, as a quarterback, third and long, you really got to rally the troops here, don't you? Yeah, you do in a big way. And what else do you have to look out for? More pressure coming at you because it seems to be working pretty well. Yeah, that is incomplete, but there is a flag. And on fourth down, this is a big call. So they decline the penalty. That seems a little odd. <laughs> I'm trying to work through it and work with them to figure out why. Well, someone's got to be confused. I, that's what I think. I'm pretty sure that the bench is saying take the penalty, and somehow in the heat of the moment, they thought they were saying decline the penalty, and that's going to work against them. They should have taken it. Goff with a kneel down here, and that should put a conclusion to this one. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. So the L.A. Rams with a victory here. And you look back over the score sheet, interesting. A very clean game, no turnovers by either side. An absolute rarity when we watch games now because defenses have put such an emphasis on taking the ball away. Well, what we saw here was offense is spending their time saying, look, you know they're coming for it. Ball security is paramount. So they worked on that, not just a week of practice, but I'm sure all during training camp. Make sure when you have it, tuck it away because danger lurks everywhere you turn. So for L.A., the final two weeks are going to tell the story for them as they move to 9-5 and five with a win. And they will head back home next week. Meanwhile, for the Titans, their playoff hopes take a hit as they drop to 7-7. Seven and seven. And they'll try to get back to their winning ways next week as they head to Indianapolis to take on the Colts.